Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping yeah, and I am back with my noobs guide for Elden Ring. And in the last episode, we were exploring the Limb Grave area. This is the first region of the game. We got pretty much almost all the items that we wanted to get, and we did some of the dungeons. Now we're gonna finish this place up, and we're also gonna go down here because there's a whole another region down here, and there's a lot to do as well in that spot. I'm going to try to get it done, but we will see because I really want to keep these episodes about an hour or an hour and a half. I don't want them to be two and a half hours or three hours long. Now, the first thing we're going to do is I'm currently at the Crucible Night. This is where I left off in the last episode. We're going to come over here on this mountain. I'm going to put a beacon there because there is an item over there that I want to grab. So let's call the horse and let's head on over there. This is going to be a Starlight Shard. Now you do need these actually for a currency, so you don't want to use these up. They are very good items though, but you only need two for the currency. I already have one, so this will be our second one, and that's basically it. If we get any more after this, you can use them if you feel like you need them, but really save these for moments where you really desperately need some FP. They can come in clutch. Now real quick, I'm going to go back up here. In the last episode, we were getting some golden seeds in this capital region. There was one that I missed. So we're going to go here, the Outer Wall Battleground. We got this grace in the last episode. Now, the reason why I missed this, though, is because on the path that I took to show you guys, I wanted to avoid all the catapults. And basically, by taking that path, I went right past the golden seed. In fact, I actually forgot about this one, and I haven't got this on a lot of my other files just because I always take this one path to avoid these catapults. But what we can do now, though, is that we can actually come up behind these guys and just take them out. There's actually like maybe four of these. We're only going to take out three, but because there's only going to be one shooting at us, it shouldn't be a problem. So take him out. And now we don't have to worry about that. And you can already see, oh, look, there's a golden seed. So let's go grab this. Anytime I miss something in a previous episode, I'm going to try to get it right away at the start of the next episode. So let's pick this up. And now let's fast travel out of here before we get shot. So we're going to go here to this lake north. And we are going to go to an enemy camp. And we're almost done with getting the items on the map. The only other place to go is actually going to be we need to go down to this one beach so I'm gonna put a beacon right here you can see my marker I'm also gonna get rid of that marker there but that's where we're gonna go and then we're gonna come all the way up here and we're gonna go to this cave the high road cave now this cave by the way is like the biggest longest cave in this entire first region it's kind of crazy so there's gonna be some enemies up here this is the camp bunch of dogs as well so let's take this guy out please drop your armor I want his chest piece I love that armor I actually have the helmet on now I like the helmet too the legs and the gloves I don't really care about but just the chest and the helmet I like a lot ah they're not dropping it there's an item here pick that up come on you're sleeping damn it okay didn't get the armor but now we're gonna go this way to follow the other beacon and there is some doggos over here. There's also an item. I did pick this up before. I believe it's something really minor though, like a smithing stone wand or a golden rune. Who knows? But pick it up along the way since you're over here anyway. Now there's going to be a bunch of these land octopuses. Don't fight them. If you want to, you could. You just have to hit them in the face. That's kind of like the secret with these things. But for the most part, there's a lot of them and it can be kind of a waste of time. So I almost forgot something. You know what? I'm going to talk about it here in a second. Let me just get to the cave and I'm going to talk about it. There is a grace over there. Now it's pretty much the last grace we need. But it's really not important. So I'm going to run over this beacon to get rid of it. Now the cave is actually going to be right there. Wow, I was really good with the beacon. Don't go this way. You can't swim because it's a FromSoft game. So if you land in that water, you're going to instantly die. Okay, in the cave we go. It's always going to be dark in here. Use your lantern. It's going to help. But now, I can open the map. Let me show you where this grace is. It's right here. So, if you're going from here, this was the camp. There's the grace. 
Like I said, it's not the most important grace because it really doesn't serve a purpose, but get it if you want to get all the graces. Okay, be careful. You're going to have to walk off here. If you just run, you might just fall, and I'm pretty sure this will kill you. There's a couple drops in here that will kill you with gravity. Like I said, this is actually like the biggest cave, so here's another hole. You can easily just run in and go, oh, Leroy Jenkins, try to get the wolf, and you just fall right down and die. So watch out. Now the hole is actually, I believe, the right way to go, so let's explore over here. I'm gonna run in. Oh my god, there's a big mama dog. There we go. Come here. Remember with these wolves, if you block them, you can actually just do your basic R1. You don't really want to guard or counter them. You can if they bounce off your shield, but they're not going to really bounce off all that often. Oh my god, there's another one. There's two of them just chilling here. Okay. Watch out. Don't be like these people who just went on down. We're going to be careful. We're going to walk down here. Now let's just jump. You could probably walk. I'm just going to walk. Okay, walking is fine. You can always jump, though, if you're not sure. Same here. We can walk. And then, again, just walk off. And again, I think you just drop at this point, And you're good. Now, the question is, which way is the right way? And which way is the wrong way? You always want to go the wrong way first. Because you want to explore. You want to get all the items. I'm pretty sure we need to go down. So instead, we're going to go up to a dead end. Okay, that was pointless. But hey, we got a crafting material. Yay. But now we're going down. And there's going to be some more doggos down here. So just swing away. Hey, look, there's some of those dead guys. Cool. Too bad I can't just take his armor off of him. So I believe this is the right way. Let's not go that way. Instead, let's go this way. And I think this is going to take us to the same spot so it doesn't really matter but there is like an item or something over here yep there is a purple item watch out take the doggo out pick that up now drop down oh we actually came behind that doggo which is nice and finally take that one out and get the item awesome okay another one i think we're good nope what again there are so many of them. So if we go this way, that's going to take us back to where we were. And if you can hear that, there's a waterfall in here. Awesome. Now you see this thing? I don't remember if I've already talked about it, but this is what's called a stake. Now if you die, you can respawn at stake. And it's going to respawn you right here. Very useful. I love that in this game. So let's go ahead and hop down. And by the way, people always talk a lot of trash saying that FromSoft always makes their games like harder, not easier. You know, that actually makes the game like a lot easier in a lot of ways, having those stakes. Because a big complaint early on for these games, all the Dark Souls games, and Demon Souls and stuff, was the whole idea that you die, and then you have to run all the way back to where you died, all the enemies are back, you gotta collect your experience, if you die again, you lose it. They have made it easier. They really have, so it's nice. So, I mean, look at this. This place is crazy, right? Let's hop down here. Look at all these blood stains. My God, and I can see why. Watch out. Just block. And now, strike. Pretty much easy. Pick up the item. Probably a trap, though. Uh, I guess not. Watch out. Take them out. So, this is the wrong way again. And, yeah, we got more in here. Let's get the item. And now we can go back. This place is a little trolly because this is a good like first time that you're going to experience a dungeon where you're just not sure about what to do or where to go. Now first of all, you should be able to drop off here. Oh my god, it's scary but you can make it. Now you need to jump over there. A normal jump might work but we're going to sprint. So if you want to sprint, just try to figure out an angle so you can run. Run it into the wall works and we can just jump, jump up and take these things out pick that up a weapon and i'm just gonna let this thing come to me i'm pretty sure the bats will bounce off the shield okay he didn't but we could still guard counter him no problem and now my god okay 
Take him out. Watch out. And we need to jump over there. Oh, boy. If you die, just respawn at the stake. A normal jump should probably work, but I did a running jump at first. We're going to go up here. More of these dead guys. And we are going to get the stuff over here. Oh, look at that. Oh, boy. Now, with these things, if you hit them in the face, they take a lot of damage. A lot. So, smack them good. And he's basically dead. You can get a critical, but don't really need to. Take out all the babies as well. And there is this item, which he dropped. Oh, another baby. And let's just look around real quick to double check, because... There's not an item right away, but there should be something over here, I believe. Okay, this is actually the right way to go. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else, though. So, what you need to do is go to the waterfall. This is what I'm talking about. Very easy to miss this. You might be running around going, where do I have to go? Now, messages can help you. So, when you see something like that, you can say, well... It's probably safe, right? Because there's a message. And look, underneath the waterfall is the way to go. Now there's some crafting materials over here. Let's pick those up and let's get ready to buff. So we're gonna use our dagger that we got and we have golden vow on it. So let's go into buff up. Now let's use one of our FP potions and you might wanna heal too, just to be safe. And let's go inside, oh boy. It's a giant golem. So just hit his foot with your L2. And you're going to hit him real hard. And if you hit him enough, he will fall over. My god, I hit him so hard there. One more. Yep, that did it. 2300. Those guys take a lot of damage, though. So you're going to get a talisman for that. And now we can get out of here. So where we're going to go is we are going to go back to this spot. And we're going to have some fun. We're going to fight the dragon of this area. The dragon's going to be down here. There's also some runes down here we're going to do. But basically, the dragon is pretty easy. The Crucible Knight, I think, is a lot harder. But the dragon can mess you up, so it should be a fun fight. But let's go ahead and cut this ahead, and I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, well, it's nighttime, but that's actually kind of a good thing. Because this is not a nighttime boss, but I do think it's better at night. Because there's these guys, they're having a party, they have a bonfire, they have some marshmallows, some beer, and we're about to crash that party. Now, real quick, where you want to go, at least you could put your beacon here, it's going to be at these ruins. So I'm going to remove my marker, and I got my beacon, and on the way will be the dragon. So, let's go on down and crash this party. Now, before we actually go over there, though, let's buff, so... Look at these next-gen amazing graphics. The fire just rendered. Awesome. Let's go ahead and pull out our dagger. We can go ahead and use that to buff ourselves. Let's use an FP potion. And why not summon? Don't really need it, but it's always nice. That's actually my first time using them, too, I think. Let's hop on the horse. Fighting the dragon on the horse, honestly, is going to be a lot easier because the dragon loves to move around. So let's go and join the party. Hey guys, what y'all doing over here? Oh my god. Okay, move! Yep, the dragon just wrecked every one of them. But we can smack it real good. And you get a lot of free damage at the start of this fight. Watch out for the stomps. Now the wings are a good spot to try to attack, and the legs as well. So those are pretty much going to be your best spots. The head takes the most damage. But... The head is really hard to hit. No! Yes. Got it before it can fly away. That's why the horse is nice, because it's really easy to avoid the fire attacks and things like that on the horse. Plus, the dragon will like to fly away and go to the other side of the map, and you have to run to chase it down. On the horse, it's very easy to chase it down. Now, we just got a dragon heart. We need those to buy the dragon incantation spells, which are faith and arcane. I really don't like the fact that they're arcane as well as faith, but they are cool spells. Unfortunately, when it comes to incantations, a lot of the really good ones are going to come at the end of the game. 
Now, that's not the case for the sorceries, though, the intelligence magic, because you can get a lot of overpowered ones stupidly early. And if you know where to go and how to explore, you're going to find them. That magic is just better. I hate to say it, it just is. And I know some people might get triggered by that, but it is a fact. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're here now, and you know the rule. I've talked about it already. There's always going to be a staircase leading down. Now, this place actually has two staircases leading down, but one is a trap. We do not want to fall for the trap. It's going to take you to a spot, which you can do. It's not, like, really hard, but... It's really annoying, so we don't want to do that. So don't fall for the trap. Let's take out all these guys. Stupid dogs as well. Dogs are so good at knocking you off the horse. Same with the torch dudes. Watch out for them. I think that's everything for the most part. But this staircase right here, this is the one that is a trap. So let's see. Be wary of rat. Messages can help you. Group ahead. Okay, now that one was good to turn back. Let's look at this one. See, a lot of these are, like, not very good. Like, come on, community. There should be more messages warning about the trap. Or at least the treasure chest, because that's what it is. There's a treasure chest, and it's a trap. But we're not going to basically go down there. Screw that. We know that we're in the wrong spot because of the rats. Just look for the rats. Now, this little spot here, this, like, tower... That's going to be an item in there. So let's go and get that. And there's a rat, so I need to kill that. And I think there might be a couple other items just laying around. Give me that. Ooh, crab eggs, let's go. Oh, another dog. Okay. So what might happen sometimes is you're looking for the staircase going down in the ruins. And you know it's always there. You can't find it. Well, normally it's going to be one of two things. It might be a fake wall where you have to hit it, or you have to jump into it. This is one of those cases where you need to jump in. So basically, just jump in. You just have to look around until you find this. I mean, if you're just watching the video, you can kind of see. But let me show you, just to make it easier. Here's the fake staircase, or the one with the trap. And this building over here to the right, that is where we need to jump in. So let's go ahead and hop off. Go down the steps, and we can actually go ahead and get the treasure chest behind the door. Now, after this, we are going to go to, in my opinion, the very first dungeon in the game. I call it the very first one because I think that you're really likely to maybe stumble upon it. So here's the first step. Here's the church. And right up here, there's a cave. So that's where we're going to go. I'm going to go ahead and just travel to the church and make it quicker. But this is like the easiest dungeon in the whole game. It's stupidly quick. Now, I really should make it daytime because I don't like it being night. I don't mind it for the dragon fight because the bonfire in the daytime kind of doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, whatever. So we're going to make it morning just so everyone can see like perfectly well. Now, let's go ahead and go to the cave. There's going to be some dogs in here. That's about it. Or really wolves. And there's going to be a couple items, and then the boss. It's going to take about maybe two minutes at the most. It's really quick. But as you were like first starting to play, if you got the church, you might have stumbled upon the cave. So it's meant to be like the easiest one, honestly. So hit the grace. Let's use our lantern. And like I said, there's a bunch of wolves in here. So we can block them in R1, or we can just get them by just running at them and doing our sprinting R1. So let's do that. Hit that one. Run over here. Hello. Missed, but follow up. Got him. I'm going to block and then R1. There we go. Watch out. There's a mama dog in here. Got to watch out for those mama dogs. All right. Uh-oh. I missed. No. There we go. Give me the item. Give me that. And there's a couple more. They're going to be over here. So let's take them out. Sprinting attack. Sprinting R2 attack and give me the item. Also grab the crafty materials if you want. Same with this item. And we're done. That's basically it. All we gotta do is wombo combo the boss. You don't even need to buff. This boss is so weak. So let's just pick up some of the crafting stuff. 
But you know what the wombo combo is. It's L2 and then R2. So wait for it to come. L2, R2, and GG. So now that the cave is done, we can fast travel. So we are going to go back to the entrance because there's a catacomb over here as well. And we're going to go just over there. And that place is going to be here. You can see it on my map. But put a beacon like right there and just walk out of the cave. Now on my very first playthrough, I knew about this catacomb. And it was really funny because I couldn't figure out how to get over there from this cave. So I actually ended up jumping up this wall. Totally pointless because all you gotta do is just hop down here. There you go. Now, in the distance, you can see one of those statues. I've talked about these, I believe, already, but they will always point the way to a catacomb. And that's important only because catacombs can be trolly. They're always by mountains. They're always, like, in little nooks. They can be hard to see. So, those things can help. But if you're following the noob's guide, you don't need it because I'll be showing you where all of them are. So, let's go ahead and come in here. You want to go ahead and hit the grace, obviously. And this is a third person game. There's a lot of gargoyles in here, but because it's third person, we can use that and look around corners. They love to be behind corners. So just hit them with the R1 right away and you'll get them. And same with this guy, pick up the item. There's gonna be some fire in here. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Now that's nothing compared to some other fire that we'll see later, but the fire always sucks. So there's a bunch of gargoyles up top here. Now they could drop down. Maybe one will, maybe two. But I'm just going to come over here. Watch out. They definitely drop down to try to get me. I'm going to take this one out. They bounce off so you can guard counter them really easily. Let's go this way and here comes the fire. But there's a guy up there. You can lock on and if you jump an R2, take him out. Now what you want to do, wait for the fire to go away and then sprint forward and make a right. So sprint forward, make a right, chill here for a second. Oh God, wait for the fire, go in and you can hit this thing. Now when you hit it, it's gonna go down and it should stay down unless an enemy will hit it or you hit it. Even if you die, it should stay down. Now for this fire, it's a little bit more of a tighter run but we need to run and go to the right. Same thing. Oh God, like I said, it's a little bit more of a tighter run, so you have to time it better. But we're going to go in. We're going to hit this. And why hit it when we can just jump? Don't ask me why that works, but it does. So if you look in the corners, you can see there's a gargoyle over there. One over here. So let's smack this one. Don't pick up the item. Okay, never mind. Sometimes these enemies won't come down if you don't pick up the item. But this is a gank fest, so you gotta watch out. Now we're so strong that this shouldn't be a problem, but the fact that they can hit you and bleed you, very annoying. But that is one of the reasons why having a large weapon with a wide swing is so nice. You've seen it. I did an R1 and took out all three. Pretty awesome. So I got the items. Now we're going to climb up here. And again, there's going to be gargoyles that are behind the wall. So, let's take a look. We can see them. Smack them. Let's grab this. Watch out. There's another one down there. Run in. Take him out. Now, I'm just going to tell you right away, there's one to the right. So, he's behind the wall. There's one in front of us, too. So, just run in. And miss, of course. And get backstabbed. Bounce off. There we go. Take this one out now. Come here. And I missed. Get smacked. All right. Pick this up. Pick that up. That's some more ashes. But to be honest, the wolves are going to be the best until we can get another one later on that's like legendary. Actually, I don't even think it's legendary, but it's the Mimic. So you want to drop down over here. And if you don't know what the Mimic is, it will mimic you. It will be you. You can clone yourself and summon yourself, which is awesome. There's a lot of crazy things you can do with it, but they did nerf it, but I do believe that it still is one of the best, if not the best, because you are the best. That's just the reality of it. Like you are very strong and your mimic is gonna be strong if you are strong. 
So, we basically got everything. We can go ahead and buff. Now, this is one of these bosses where you probably want to wait for an opening. Be reactive. It should be really easy, though. Two hits should do it. So, let's go in and try to let it swing. Okay. Boom. I love that because you actually will dodge backwards. That's so awesome. You can avoid attacks because of that. But you see right there, he swung, he missed, I swung, I killed him. So it's reactive. Now that that's done, we got some more ashes, but we're going to fast travel back to the beginning of this catacomb because we're going to go to this beach. Now we already found this cave in episode one and there was a monkey NPC. We talked to him. I'm going to explain that again just in case somebody missed it, but we're going to meet this NPC in this next cave and we can progress his quest. I also do need to go back to the round table and progress a couple quests over there. So I probably will do it in this episode, but hopefully I will remember. That's the only problem. I might forget. But we need to go down this way. So let me show you. We're basically heading down to the beach, but we can just head down this way. There's gonna be a giant, and that means free XP. So we're gonna take it real quick. Also, you should probably level up. Again, don't do what I'm doing by holding on to all this XP. It's uh, not a good idea ever to do that. So let's head on down and I'm gonna charge up my heavy and schmack. And now I'm just gonna circle and R1 spam. Come on, just die. Now on this beach, this is gonna be our very first invisible scarab. These things can be very annoying. Now what most people do is they look at it, they try to learn the pattern and then they might get off their horse, wait for it to come, do some AOE attack, and try to take it out. The thing is, is that there is something you can do that makes it a lot easier. So this is what I would recommend. Be on your horse, and you can look at the pattern to kind of see where is it going. This one is easy, because it's the first one you're ever going to see. It's just going to go in a circle. But if you charge up your heavy, you will drag the sword. So if I run this way, put down the sword, that's it. Pretty much, I believe all those invisible scarabs will have like one HP. So no matter what, if you hit them, you got them. So this little attack is really good at getting them. Now that might look like a merchant, but it's not. It is a troll. So let's pick up the item. Now we're going to run on the beach and we're going to go to that one cave again. So there should be another item by that giant octopus enemy over there. And there is a merchant over here. I didn't talk to him in the first episode. I'm going to talk to him now. He actually does have an item that we want to buy. If you're a samurai, you don't need this item because the samurai starts with a bow. But if you didn't start as the samurai, you're going to want to get this because we're going to go into a dungeon. Technically, it is a dungeon in the very first area, but it really doesn't feel like a dungeon in the first area. It's actually like pretty hard. If you're following the walkthrough, it's not going to be bad at all, but if you came in here by yourself, not knowing what you're doing, this place will make you rage. So let's go ahead and hop off and talk to him, and I'm going to buy the cookbook. You can buy the notes if you want to read them. They give you some hints, but the main thing we're going to buy is the bow. We need a bow for the really trolly and annoying dungeon. Also, I'm going to buy some arrows just in case. And I'm good. So, I love the update because, if you remember, I actually put this little marker here. I'm going to get rid of that. Don't need it anymore. You can still use the marker if you didn't buy everything you want from the merchant. But, now that the update is out, when you talk to him, he's always on the map. Man, that's a big change and I love it. So, now we need to go to the cave. So, the cave is here on the beach. I already found it before let me actually get rid of this marker as well and the NPC is gonna be in here oh I missed it just like in the first episode I ran right past it it's a cave so let's put on our lantern and you want to hit the grace in here but let me show you where to find this NPC if you haven't found him yet for some reason I'm also gonna to talk to him real quick just to hear what he has to say he's basically beaten up and he's just warning you about the cave but if you haven't found him yet, from this lake north, 
basically he would be around here and when you approach him he'll talk he's a bush you have to hit the bush then you can talk to him and once you've done that he will move to this the coastal cave and we can basically progress his quest so what we're gonna do is come down here it's gonna be a lot of monkeys in here technically yes they're called zimmy humans but i mean come on they're monkeys right they're chimps so just run in smack these ones and let's come down and smack the rest. There's going to be several. Oh my god. That's a lot of blood stains. Look at all the blood stains. People are getting wrecked in here. That's a shame. Come here. There we go. Now there actually is an NPC summon. You can summon it if you want. But it doesn't make any difference. It will make the boss a little harder though. Because with this build, we should be able to one-shot the boss. Now remember this guy's name for later. It's not good for him, but just if you want to remember his name, you can. And if you want to summon him, you can. It's up to you. But we're going to go ahead and buff. And we need to kill these big ones. So one L2 should do it because we're so strong. Let's see. Run in. Here's the big one. L2. Goodbye. And now there's another one. Avoid all the monkeys. And he's just over here. Come on. Let's get him, L2. And by the way, whenever you kill the big ones, the small ones are going to surrender, which is really funny. They will all just stop attacking you. Now, right there, we got, for beating the boss, the sewing needle. We need to give that to that NPC, so hopefully I remember. But first, let's actually exit this way before we go back, because there's going to be a beach and there's going to be a dragon church over here. And this is one of the places that you can actually exchange those dragon hearts for those dragon incantations, which are really cool spells. They are awesome. Some of them look really cool, but they're not very good. But most of them are actually fairly okay. So let's go ahead and pick up all this stuff. Watch out. I think that's it though. Yeah, that's it. So let's go outside. Now, I don't know if there's anything on this island. Let me know. I don't think there is. I don't want to waste time exploring it right now. It's pretty small. I mean, look at it. I think the only thing here is the grace and the church. So let me show you the church. So we're going to hop off, hit the grace. And then there is going to be this altar that we can mess with. And we can see the dragon spells. The more dragons you kill, the more spells you're going to get. And if you want to buy these, you have to exchange the dragon hearts. Now, real quick, I do want to bring this up. I'm pretty sure to get the spells to even be available, you do have to kill that giant grandpa ancient dragon that we killed in episode one. And he gave us all the XP. So I'm pretty sure you have to do that. But now that we're done with that, we are basically done with this whole area. I don't think there's anything I missed but now it's time to go and do this trolley kind of crazy area. So here's the first step. The very first grace in the open world. This is the grace that was before that. So this is where we're going. But let me tell you, this dungeon does not feel like a beginner dungeon. If you're following the walkthrough, you shouldn't have a problem. But if you came in here by yourself blind, this is so crazy i mean it really is even on a second playthrough my friend was raging doing this for a second time so i'm just giving you a heads up now you can skip it potentially but i'm gonna cut this ahead i'm gonna see you guys in a moment all righty well i've already opened this from before but you're gonna have to use some stone sword keys and you're gonna need two of them now a lot of these statues when you use them will only take one and the way that you can tell is that you'll see one sword already in one of the gargoyles and then you have to put one in so you can open the door some cases you do have to use two but the general rule is is that when you have to use two the place you're gonna go into will give you one back so that's pretty nice now down there that is all poison now, a quick tip, don't roll. If you roll in poison, it's going to cover you, and that's going to definitely poison you. So if you want to get through this, you can literally just sprint to the end. That's fine. I'm going to show you a kind of cool thing you can do, though, and that is you see all the breakable objects. 
you can actually jump on top of them. Now you gotta be careful because your feet are powerful and they can break everything when you jump. But if you can land on top, you can let this tick down and then you can make it to where you're trying to go. So let's run over here and you're about to meet the bane of your existence, the chariot. The chariot is so trolly. It is super bad. Now the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna run down and then there's going to be on the left and the right places where we can stand where we won't get hit. Now what we can do to make this a little bit faster and better is we can actually just get to the second one right away. So I'm gonna point this out. If you wanna be super careful though, you can stop at the first one. It's up to you. Next time it comes back, I'm gonna run for it. I will pick up the item and you will have more than enough time if you're sprinting to make it to the second one. So I'm gonna show you that now. I recommend we're gonna go to the left first because there's an enemy and yeah. Let's take out the enemy. So get ready. Let's go. Run, run, run. Pick up the item. Make sure you're sprinting after picking it up. So that's the first one over there. The next one is coming up. So you see it coming. Oh my god. That was close, but I mean, it shouldn't be that close. If you want to stop, though, at the first one, like I said, you can do that. Now when it goes back up, I'm going to go to the one I'm looking at right now. You can see it. The archway. There's going to be an enemy in there, though. So we're going to run to it, take out the enemy. Now this is really nice, really nice. Basically, we can actually get a lot of time here. If we hop down from here, we can make it to where we're trying to go, and the chariot really shouldn't get you. You want to be quick, but you can take a little time to double check and look at this ledge. But if you're following what I'm doing, you should have no problem. So hop down. And then we're going to sprint. Don't worry about this item coming up. We're going to sprint down here. Also, don't worry about the little nooks. You don't need to stand in them. Right here, you can just walk off. Walk off, and it's safe. Now, down here, there's some gargoyles. And by the way, this place down here, this is a nightmare. But watch this. Oh my god, I didn't one-shot him. That's crazy, right? Now, the guard counter will one-shot. If you two-hand, you might one-shot. If you use your Ash of War, you'll definitely one-shot. But that's what I mean about, is this dungeon really a beginner dungeon? I don't know. Okay, this part. This part sucks. There's going to be fire, and you thought that the first fire was a little bit annoying? Wait till you see this. Same thing, though. We're going to run past the fire, go to the right. There will be a gargoyle, though, so watch out. So we need to trigger it first. You gotta run down, trigger it, run back up, and just run like up, up. Now wait for it. Now we can go. We're gonna only to make a right though. And gargoyle. And he hit me too, of course. Now we're just gonna chill here and wait for it. I'm pretty sure once you put this down, just like the other ones, if you do die, it should be down in the future. So let's knock it down. Over here on the left, there's going to be a couple gargoyles. Of course, there's always one, like, probably on the ceiling. I don't think he's on the right or left. I think he's on the ceiling. So let's just rush in, take the first one out, and let's guard. And guard counter. And there is an item in here. Let's pick that up. And now this part is ridiculous. I'm serious. Now, what I'm going to do is going to show you how to make it a lot easier. And in fact, I believe you can actually use this fire to help you as well. But we don't need to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to run in here and then run back. Now, technically, we could go get the item and then run back, but you might die. You definitely do not want to fight on that bridge. If you fight on that bridge over there, you're going to get knocked off. You're going to die to gravity. It will happen, I promise you. So run in here until this enemy drops down. So the enemy is going to drop. There it is. Now turn around and run back. Another one's going to drop, and you're like, oh my god. Because you know what those are. Those things are OP. But you can actually run back up here and just wait here. And you can have just one of them come after you. Or both, I guess. But you can pretty much kite the enemy to just get one on you. And then you just want to attack when you get an opening. So just block, wait for an attack, and here comes the fire probably. Like I said, the fire is not bad, so let's do that, and come on fire, 
think it's time to party. So you see that? That really does help a lot. And I'm just trying to get an opening. Here we go. That's good. Right there. I'm going to do my R2. That was a little risky, but it worked. Knock that back down just in case. And I'm going to heal. Let's run in here. Try to lure this one. We can do the same thing technically, but again, once you feel like you have an opening, like right there. Well, no, he's still swinging. Oh, man. Oh, man. We got to back up. Let's double chug. So now he's in here. It's so hard to actually get an opening with these guys because they never stop attacking. Luckily, we are OP. Imagine coming in here with an unupgraded weapon. That would be a nightmare. Like I said, you could just grab the item and run for it. And it is something that I would maybe recommend. This is a pretty good talisman though, I'm going to be honest. This is one of the best ones in the game. Now, the beginner one, I probably wouldn't use it. Maybe I would, I don't know, we'll see. But the better ones, which it goes all the way up to plus two, that is one that everyone uses on every build because it's stupidly good. I guess I'll show it and talk about it real quick. What this does, this is the Earth Tree Favor, and it gives you HP, stamina, and equip load. So it's the holy trinity of good. And the first beginner one, it's not that big of a bonus, but when you get the plus two one much later, the legendary, it's pretty nice. So we're going to hop down here, and it's safe. Don't worry about gravity. The problem with the bridge, though, is that they'll knock you down and you'll fall all the way down and that will kill you. So hop down into the water. And now we're going to run up these stairs. I believe there's an elevator. Yes, there is. There's also going to be night coming up, so be ready for that. But we can actually get some revenge on the stupid chariot. This is one of the best things. Now, when you first do these areas, especially if you're doing it blind, you're not going to know this and you're, you're going to have to deal with the chariot the whole time but once you know this it changes everything so these guys can be annoying let's try to get behind them maybe the backstabs are amazing with the shield if you circle now we can do that and he's gone now up here there's an item and look what it is i told you you're gonna get one now we will equip that bow we want to unequip it though because this is probably going to put us at heavy load and it does. Now let's switch to the bow and we need to two hand it. So hold triangle R1. Now you need to aim it with L1. Just hold it down and this thing is coming up and down, up and down. Now up there we can actually shoot any of those strings. So it might be a little hard to see. But the key is this. You want to listen. When you hear the chariot crash into the wall you want to shoot so I'm gonna wait for this one I'm gonna hold it down so I'm holding R1 and it's gonna crash I release now we can look bye bye bitch and yeah now we don't have to worry about the cherry it's not gonna respawn so if you die it's all good and that's awesome trust me I wish I would have known that for my first playthrough this place was a nightmare I actually ran through here with my friends too and we all died so many times. It was hilarious, but frustrating. So let's pick up the item here. And now there's going to be two paths. You're going to have upper path and a lower path. Let's go on the upper path first, because basically this is where we're going to get an item and stuff. The lower path is where the boss is. There's going to be enemies, but to be honest, you really don't have to fight them. Run for it. There's really no reason not to. Watch out though, they can shoot you, so you might want to juke. I don't think they're going to chase you all the way up here. There is another knight over there, so if you rush him and do your L2, you should be okay. Let's try that. There we go. Do the follow-up. And yeah, very easy. He drops a seal, which is awesome. We can pick up the grease as well. Now this guy is all alone, so I'm going to take him out. Aw, let's take him out. And now we can just run for it again. Because, yeah, there's a lot of guys. A lot of guys. So we're just running for it. See you later. Oh, yeah, by the way, 100%, 1,000% level up before you do this place. Just because the chance of dying is very high. I'm an idiot. 
I don't know why I'm not leveling up. I should be, but I'm not. So we're going to run down again if there's enemies. And there is. Let's just run for it. And we're going to get to the boss here. I'm pretty sure there's a stake, which is really nice. So if you die, you'll respawn at the stake. Always pick that option if you see it, by the way. Sometimes going back to the last grace is better. But in most cases, the stake will always be better. Okay, so... This boss can be a little frustrating, I guess. I personally think the best thing is to try to just stay right up on it. It tends to miss a lot of its melees when you're right up on it for some reason. So let's go ahead and buff. And I'm going to go and use my FP potion. Hopefully I will not run out of FP, but you might. So yeah, this thing. Ugh. It's ugly, but let's do our wombo combo and just stay on it and you should be good. It will explode at some point. It's about the halfway health point. It's going to explode like right now, for example. Oh, okay. I'm surprised it didn't explode, explode. There it is. Now just run away. Just get ready for that. And let's rush it. See the tail attack? I'm blocking, but it didn't hit me at all because I'm right up on it. That's what I'm talking about. One more attack and it should be gone. There we go. It's pretty easy, but it can be annoying. You do get a golden seed though, which is awesome. And you get a summon. So that's cool. But now we are officially done with the first area. I'm pretty sure we've done literally everything. So now I'm going to head down to the second little area down here. Now before I actually go here... I'm going to go ahead and go to the lake south, and we need to cross this bridge. So I'm going to cut this ahead, I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, well first things first, I need to level up. I've been holding on to all these runes, that's not smart, don't do that. Now if you want more defense, go for vigor, and if you want more offense, go for dex. That's really your two choices. I'm going to get my vigor up to 30, then I'm going to get my dex up to 30. Then I'm going to get my Vigor up to 40. Then I'm going to get my Dex up to 40. So I'm going to play it like that for now. But where we're going to go is down here. You don't even really need a beacon because we're heading towards this bridge. If you remember from episode 1, we actually did run across this bridge and I said don't cross it. Well now we're going to cross it. So let's take out this enemy. There's also a couple of nighttime bosses we're about to fight right away. So if it's nighttime, it's fine. But I'm going to make it night once I get over there. So on the bridge, there is a ballista, so watch out. Let it shoot you and then just rush it. So let's just rush it now. And you will have to jump up to hit the guy. And now we can grab the items. So let's grab this. And there's another one on the bridge. Be careful. Don't fall off. Enemies will rush you as well. You can fight them if you like or you just run for it. But right to your right is a grace. So make sure you go and grab that. And then if you follow the road down here... There's a girl, so let's go ahead and talk to her. She's going to have a side quest. She wants us to give a note to her father. He's at the castle. This is the side castle of this area. So just make sure you talk to her fully and tell her that you're going to actually deliver the note. And basically, if we complete her quest, it's going to open up another quest later on. That's something that we definitely want to do. Let's go ahead and get back on the road now. There's going to be several items up here. There's also a giant, but first, if I remember right, yep, there's a bunch of dogs. Let's take the dogs out first, because they are going to be very annoying if we don't. Now, technically, you could just go ahead and rush right away and just get the items and be done with it, but it's up to you. Rushing the dogs when they're unaware makes it a lot easier to take them out, because they always like to bark. So now this giant is not attacking you right away. So you get some free hits. Oh, watch out for the other enemy, though. Come on. Just die. Ah, okay, there we go. But we get that free XP, so I want it. Now, let's get the items. I'm not going to fight anything else. So let's just grab that and grab that. And now let's rush this scarab over here. Should be pretty easy to take out. Come here. All right. And that's Mighty Shot. It's a bow skill. And just over here, there's going to be a grace. The map is also coming up, so we're going to get that in a second. There's also a merchant, so 
if you want to talk to him, I believe he is selling a stone key. This is the one item that I bought. I don't really think anything else is necessary right now, so it's up to you. If you don't have runes, though, to buy something and you want to buy something, if you're holding on to your golden runes, you can always pop these to buy something. I know that it's tempting to just pop them all and level up, but you can always pop a bunch of them to level up and hold on to some of them just in case you need some XP to buy something from a merchant. So let's make it nighttime, and there's going to be another one of these night riders over here. So we need to take him out real quick. You're going to see him right away. Now again, it's really easy to deal with this guy on the horse, so let's just go ahead and rush him and smack him if we can. I'm going to play reactive, so let him swing. I'm going to run in and swing on him. That attack right there is super annoying with his horse. There it is again. He gets that attack off like so quick, it's really hard to deal with that. And now he smacked me good. Don't want him knocking me off the horse. Now that's his big attack right there, where he swings his flail three times. I'm going to heal my horse real quick. And one more hit, and he's going to get fall off his horse. There we go. Now he's basically dead. Once he falls off, just swing at him until he's dead. And we're going to get a couple things from him. One is Barricade Shield, which was insanely good. I don't know how good it is now, but they did nerf it. They nerfed the duration of it. But let's go ahead and come down here. This is the map right here. And once you get it, you can also see the castle in the distance. But it's really easy to miss because your eyes might be focused on that castle. There's a golden seed right there. Let's go ahead and grab that. And then there's another nighttime boss that we can get over here as well. It's literally just over here by him. So pick this up, golden seed. And if we just come down here and make a right, this is where the next nighttime boss is going to be. There's also some bats over here, so watch out for that. But once he lands, we can just go ahead and destroy him on the horse. Got the double head off there, pretty nice. And if you keep moving, you should have no problem avoiding Okay, well, the bats. The stupid bats got me good. Now, I just need to get up and do my L2, and I should be okay. Alright, L2. There you go. He's gone. And he's gonna drop a weapon, I'm pretty sure. Let's pick up the flowers as well. Give me all the flowers. Nice. I'm gonna heal up. Now I'm gonna head to the castle. In front of the castle will be an archer. It's a giant. And I didn't know that he doesn't respawn. I already killed him. So just rush him. Try to avoid his arrows. Once you get underneath him, he's dead. He's very weak too. So you'll kill him no trouble at all. But inside the castle is a graze, so I recommend getting the graze. Don't go into the castle yet though. We will be exploring it later and doing it. But for now, just get the graze so that we can fast travel back to it later. If we exit the castle and go to the right, which is east, there are a couple things. One, you can read that sword over there if you want the lore. But on the beach down here, is going to be some red jellyfish and a couple items so we're going to go get those now if these guys are red they're hostile so just take them out sneak up on them and take them all out now let's grab the items thank you awesome and if we actually look i'm going to put a beacon right here do the same by the way so if you see my map pretty much do the same let me get rid of that and that as well because that's where those bosses were there's gonna be a scarab over here now this is like a poison pond it's really weird because I don't think there's any items in the pond and you would think there would be there's a bunch of enemies in this pond though so you see this if you are on foot I believe you can be poisoned in here and all these enemies are kind of poison enemies so it's kind of weird that there's no items over here but around this hill though there is a scarab. Now these are one of the really quick ones. So I haven't talked about these ones, the white ones. But basically what these are, they're really fast. If they see you, they're going to just like dart off. It's crazy. Now if we go up this hill, so there's some bats over there. But if we pass them and go up the hill, there's going to be an enemy up here. And there should be an item. I already picked this up. I believe it was like a smithing stone one or something like that. Something minor. Let's take the enemy out and grab the item. So now where we're going to go is actually back to the round table. There are some side quests. I need to get them started and I need to do them now because otherwise I'm going to keep forgetting. If you want a tip though, 
If you want to go right back to the round table immediately, just hit triangle and then square and you can go right to the round table. So I'm going to cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, now the main person we want to talk to here is D. It's this guy at the round table. So talk to him and we're going to show him this death route that we got. We actually have two of these. And you want to accept his invitation. And basically once we do all this, he's done with his quest. Now there is another guy. We're going to find him later at the Stormville Castle, which is the main castle. He's a sorcerer. So we're going to save this Freya quest. So I'm going to talk about that. Because D can die. If you talk to Freya, you can actually get a dagger from her, and then you can have D die. Now, the thing about the sorcerer, his quest doesn't really matter, to be honest, because it's just a bunch of lore. That's really all it is. So, talk to this girl over here. This is important. You want to talk to her. I talked to him too. We did find his servant, if you remember that. So, what we need to do is talk to the blacksmith. And we're going to bring that girl up to him. This is important because this is going to give us spirit tuning, which allows us to upgrade our summons. So now we need to go back to the girl, and we're going to talk to her. There's a lot of back and forth here, to be honest. So just talk to her, and you would just want to say the stuff, you know, tell her what the blacksmith said. Then we're going to go back to the blacksmith. And yeah, that's basically it. We just need to reload the area, and she's going to move. And we can actually start to upgrade our summon, which is super important, obviously. So, she wants to watch him. And then you want to say, it's what she wants. And that's basically it. We're done. Now we can just go ahead and reload the area. She's going to move. And we can actually upgrade our summon a little tiny bit. Now, what I could do, which I thought about, is show you how to get your summon up to plus 5 right away. Now, she's always going to be right by the blacksmith. So you can talk to her and you can do spirit tuning. So we're going to have a ton of these upgrade materials. Look at that. 13. You only need one. Now we need to get two. We need to get three. We need to get four, five, all the way up to plus 10. But they give you a ton of those. Now I'm probably going to show you guys maybe how to upgrade the summon to plus five right away. But we'll see. We just don't need it right now. We're so OP. Now I want to talk about this because I brought her up before. I said you don't want to talk to her. I'm going to talk to her real quick just to show you this. But basically she's important. Her quest will affect your ending and it will give you a trophy or achievement. So if you let her hold you, this is going to put a debuff on you. And the wiki and many other guides have messed people up. Because they have said you need to get this debuff and go and fight a bunch of bosses and stuff. That is not true at all. You do not have to do that. All you have to do to progress her quest is get to the capital outskirts area. And if you take that lift like we did in episode one, we went and got the medallion. We used the lift. That is all it takes. So you only ever really have to get the debuff on you once. That's it. So what I'm talking about, of course, is all the way up here. If you would have taken this lift and went to this area, you're done with her quest. You can progress it. So if I talk to her again, I can actually talk to her in secret. And basically, I could progress her quest. I don't want to do that, and I don't recommend doing it right now. Because I'm going to get the sorcerer. I'm going to do the sorcerer stuff just to show you. Like I said, it's not important. But the one thing that does matter is you want to complete D's quest. So I'm not going to talk to her. We're just going to leave that alone for now. And basically, we are going to get rid of the debuff. To get rid of the debuff, you just have to use that item that she gave you. She's going to give it to you every time you talk to her. So every time she puts the debuff on you, you can get rid of it. Just find the item. It's this thing right here, this blessing. And what that does, it gives you some temporary poise. But the moment that that wears off, we're going to get rid of that debuff. You can see it on the screen. It's the little red square with the down symbol. That means our health is being like debuffed. So there it goes. We got our health back. It's not a big debuff. It's like 5%. But why do we want 5% less health? That sucks, right? So now where we're going to go is to the sending gate. It's right here by this third church. And this is going to teleport us to another area. We can talk to this one beast guy. Now this beast guy, if you give him death roots... 
he is going to give you incantations, the beast incantations. There was one, it was called Beast Claw, which in the network test, from my understanding, I didn't play the network test, it was so overpowered, it was insane. And basically, they nerfed the hell out of it. So use the gate, and then we're going to go to this area, and we have to open this big door. We can get a grace in there, we can talk to the guy. He's also going to give us an item that I guess is kind of important. It's called the Beast Eye. And what that does is that it's going to let us know when there is one of those death roots in the area. So it's kind of useful. Let's go ahead and get this grace. Another thing in this area that is really good is a golden seed. And I believe we might have enough golden seeds after this to get another potion. So that will be cool. So talk to him and give him the death root. And he's going to give you some stuff in exchange. The main one, like I said, will be an incantation. He gives you the seal and the beast eye. So the beast eye will now let us know like whenever there's a death root in the area. Now this is a boss over here. Because of what we did with D, where we got the invitation, he will not attack us. If you try to come over here without getting the invitation, he will try to attack you. And he is a hard boss. Really hard boss. So we will kill him, but much later. Watch out for these enemies. Just go ahead and grab the golden seed. Now we can just go ahead and head down to the grace that's down here. There's also a dragon on this bridge. So yeah, we don't want to mess with that dragon. There's also a knight over here, another one of those knight riders, and he will only come out at night. But the thing is, is that you can cheese him. Now I'm pretty sure they're going to patch that eventually. So I don't want to cheese him for the walkthrough because I just feel like they're going to patch the actual cheese. But basically, he's on this bridge over here. But now, let's get out of here. That was the whole point. We just wanted to complete D's quest. If you go back and talk to D, he's going to be happy. He'll sell you some incantations. So if you want to get him, you can. You don't have to, though. We're not using him for the build. But now, we're going to go back over here. We're going to go to this location, this Castle Moor Rampar. And basically, we're going to now come up this way. Because there's some wind we can take. And it's going to take us up here, and we can do everything we need to do up there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead. I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, well, we're going to hit this wind. It's going to be right here by the grace, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, real quick, if you aim a little bit to the right, you can see that tower. We can actually jump up to the tower. There is an item up here, so... It's just better to do it this way. There's a shield, the great turtle shield. Pretty cool shield to be honest. You look like a ninja turtle. Pick this item up. There is another way of getting up here. If you actually don't hit it and you come up to this rock, you can actually jump on like this thing and then jump up. It's just easier to hit the wind though, trust me. Now let's come over to this tower. This is gonna be the very first one of these towers that we're gonna find, but basically, these towers will have a memory stone in them, which will give you more memory, so more spells. Talk to this, it's going to say, Seek Three Wise Beasts, and the very first one is just right here. Very obvious, no problem. The next one will be in the bushes over here. Take him out. Now the final one is a little bit trolly. Now if you're online, you should see some messages, but the reality is, it's just going to be in the pond over here. I guess you can kind of see it moving around or something, but the messages might help. Boom. Yeah, you can see the water like move. But now that that's done, the tower is going to open up and we can actually go to the top and get the memory stone. So just come on in, take the ladder. Now, I'm pretty sure the only thing that are ever in these rises, that's what they're called, towers, is the memory stone. I don't think there's really ever any other items. So let's go up top all the way up the steps and open the chest and here is the memory stone now there is going to be a catacombs over here in this location so that's where we're going to go next i'm just going to hop off i think that's safe and let's go ahead and call the horse and i'll show you on the map so right in front of us there's a grace and i think that's an item over there so let's go get that first and then we'll go and actually get the catacomb just ride on over like i said along the way there will be a grace so make sure you hit that a couple other enemies as well 
pretty sure if you make a right over here, there's some enemies here too. I don't think they really matter much. But if you make a right, that will take you to the catacomb. If you come up this way though, I believe there's an item. Yes, there is. So let's go and get that. I put a little marker on the map for myself so I could remember. But let's pick it up. And it's another one of the stone keys. That's cool. So now let's get down to the catacombs. So we're just going to go back and find like the hill leading down. And basically we'll clear this catacombs. And then we'll start to clear a bunch of the dungeons in this area. They're pretty easy to find and get. There's not that many. This is a much shorter area than the first one that we did. So the catacombs is right here. Just going to ride in. Make sure you hit the grace. And this catacombs is either going to have a bunch of skeletons or a bunch of gargoyles. It's always the case. Just come on in and go down the steps. Do not jump off. The messages might say try jumping and stuff. That's not true. It's just death. Okay, so there's one behind me too. Watch your back here. Because that's just annoying how there's always a billion of them. And they are hiding around corners and everything. There's one in front of us. You know there's going to be one behind us, too. So I'm going to rush the one in front of me. Watch out. Smack him. Look behind you. I told you. I knew it. All right. Try to take... There's... Oh, my God. They're so annoying. I hate these things so much. And you will hate them, too. Trust me. Especially once they get stronger. Oh, my God. Once they start hitting you, like, really hard, they are so frustrating because they're so fast and they move so weird. Obviously, there's going to be some in here. Probably another one somewhere. They're always on the roofs or around the corners. But there we go. We just got the level 2 version of that. So now, we can actually upgrade our summon again, but to plus 2. So that's cool. And as we play, we're going to get more and more. Okay, watch out here. Run over here. Grab that. Let that go down. And then let's go back. And when that rises up, we can actually drop down pretty easy and now we just need to find the door now this one this is a ghost one pretty much that's the way it works there's going to be the grave ones and the ghost ones so there's a bunch of enemies in here but the ghost ones are for some of the summons and the grave ones are for the other ones we're gonna not kill everything in here because I believe there's like a billion of these zombies but we're going to grab all the items and stuff let's read the message it's probably gonna be a troll be wary of trap. Yeah, yeah. Of course, there's always a trap. I thought the message was going to say, Hidden Path Ahead. You see that all the time. And you will hit many walls that are just trolls. Because you think, it looks like it could be a fake wall. And somebody put a message down to say, it is a fake wall. But it's not. So, go up the ladder. I believe the switch is up here. And this is a pretty short catacomb, to be honest. So hit the switch, and I hate that message that pops up. I mean, look, message is there, right? I'm trying to block. Oh, I can't block. I'm trying to roll. I can't roll. I'm trying to attack. I can't attack. I have to triangle. Oh, I didn't mean to fall down. Oh, 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 oh my god. Not good. Definitely not good. This is really bad in a way, but just got to murder everything. Oh, man, that was, that was scary. But yeah, that's the problem with that message. When you use one of those stone keys, it's the same problem. I don't know why they didn't make it so that by pressing any button, that's what I would have done. Make it so when the message pops up, if you press any button, it goes away. Not just triangle, because that will get you killed. It will get you killed a lot, to be honest, if you're not like aware of that. Okay, so we have a boss in here. Let's go ahead and buff up real quick. And I'm going to use an FP potion just so that I have full FP. And the boss should be pretty easy. Which one is it? Okay, so this boss is only a little annoying because of the fact that there's gargoyles in here. Lots and lots of gargoyles. It's probably best to try to take them out first. Otherwise, you're going to have a terrible time. See how they dodge? See how they move? They're so annoying. Watch that attack. Get an attack off. Let's back up. Watch the gargoyle. One more. Well, maybe not one more attack, but... Ah! Gargoyles. There we go. Boom. Pretty close. And there you go. 
So technically, yes, you can rush the boss, try to just do massive damage, and once the boss is dead, the gargoyles are also dead. So now, where we're going to go is we're going to get rid of some of these markers I have, just because we don't need them on the map no more. But we are going to actually go to this tower. I forgot about this. Let's go back to this grace, just to make it quicker. But from this top part, we can get to this tower, so that's what we'll do. I need to put a beacon over here. Right here by all the trees. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but from here, we can get over there. You can't get over there, I don't think, any other way. So we should have probably done this first. Let's see. Yep, you see this? You just need to hop down here onto this. Oh, I guess I took a little damage. And just ride across. And this is a lookout tower. So there's going to be enemies, but basically we just need to climb to the top. And we can get an item up there. Oh, yellow eye dog. Awesome. Give me that extra experience. I'll take it. So I'm pretty sure we have to go around the tower. Here it is. And now we can climb up it. And there should be a chest or something up here. So let's just take a look as we climb. Just to double check. Make sure there's nothing as we go up. Again, is there a chest or an item? Nope. Maybe in there? Sometimes they don't ever make it so when you break this stuff. Oh, look at this guy. Get out of here. If you, like, break this stuff, you don't get, like, anything. Most games, obviously, it's like, oh, I got some gold or something when I break the breakables. In this game, never is going to be the case, but there can be items hidden there. So, we just got a crossbow, so that's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and get rid of that marker if I can. All right. Now I'm going to fast travel down here. I'm actually going to cut this ahead, so I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty guys, well I'm at this first grace and what I like to do is actually take this shortcut over this mountain to get to this cave. Now the reason why is because finding this cave can be actually kind of annoying if you're not actually doing it this way. They actually even put this one candle item to kind of help you see where the cave is. It's really hidden. But by just jumping up here, there's nothing really up here to be fair, but by jumping up here we're able to kind of see the hill going down and you can obviously see something's down there so you're gonna take a little damage but let me just go ahead and heal up and now let's go to the cave there's the candle i'm talking about if you hit that it's going to take you over to the cave because they know this is pretty hidden pretty much get into the cave you know the drill by now let's use the lantern it's going to be dark there's also going to be a trap right away so hit the grace, but then there's a chest, it's a trap. Go to the side, to the right side, and you can open it. If you walk on that floor, you're going to fall through, and you're going to take some damage, I believe, and you're going to get ganked by a bunch of rats. We don't want that. So now let's just rush forward. It's going to be rats down here, so just be ready for that. And I believe this is the first group. Oh, I missed. We'll take him out. Now we can take this one out. And let's grab the item. And there's going to be a bunch of them down here. Look at all the blood stains. That's crazy. But most of them are probably people falling through. That happens all the time. You fall through, you get ganked, you die. That's kind of how it goes here. So take out all these rats. I don't know why they're not moving. Very weird, but I'll take it. Going to be a couple rats up here and a couple items. So take them out. And now let's get the items. And be careful up here. You can actually like drop off. I don't think it will kill you. But it will actually like damage you. And there is no boss door here. But the boss is right here. So be ready. Let's go ahead and pull out our dagger. And let's buff. And it's going to be a bear. So just be aggressive. That's what I say. I'm going to run in. It was sleeping. So we got a free hit. And I got hit. We're going to do another hit. And I'm going to try to do my R2. And it worked. And there you go. Very easy, but the bears are just annoying because they're so freaking aggressive. Now, let's go ahead and go back to the cave, and we can exit the cave. And then from there, there are some ruins we can do, and then there's going to be a path that's going to take us to the first church of this area that we're going to go to. There's three churches in this area, and that means there's three sacred tiers, which is crazy. Our potion is going to be at plus eight. So if we go back up the hill, first of all, there was an item there. But we're going over here. You can see it on your map. There's some runes here. 
That's where we're going. Let me grab the item real quick. And just kind of turning this way and going past this candle thing, you're going to see the ruins right away. Now, there is a staircase going down here, and there is kind of like a mini boss here. This is one of the ones where you might have trouble finding the staircase going down, but it's here. You just have to find it. That's the rule. So, let's go around this way. And you know you're in the right spot when you see this bigger demi human, which is this guy. There are some messages there, but yeah, just jump over the wall. And now we can go and get the item in the chest at the bottom of the steps. And then we will go and deal with the mini boss guy. If you kill him, he's going to drop like a staff and a spell. But all of the other demi humans will surrender, which is kind of a cool mechanic in the game. But let's just go after the big guy right away. No reason to sit there and try to kill all the little guys first, when all we have to do is take out the big guy. Let's get on the horse. And basically, this is the right way. There are a couple of little guys right here. But you can see the doorway. And we're heading north on the compass. But let's rush the big guy and smack him good. One more hit. He's gone. Now the rest of them should surrender. Okay, I guess they're not. Now they are. Yeah, that's right. I'm your daddy. But if we go north through this door, there's actually going to be an item over here. I put a marker on the map, but you can actually see there's some little plants and there's a bowl. This is going to be for the mixed potion and it is the faith crystal tier. And what that's going to do is give us 10 faith for 3 minutes. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with your build because of the mixed potion. So, kill all those guys. Now we're going up this hill. Basically by going up this hill, I can get rid of this marker. By going up the hill, we're going to hit this church. So that's the plan right now. You're going to hit a road. So you know you're going the right way. You can kill that plant if you want, but there's really no reason to. So let's just go ahead and come over here. And we are hitting the road, and there's the church. Now we're going to get the sacred tear in there, and there is a grace in there as well. Go ahead and do that. But after this, I'm going to actually take us back to another grace, and we're going to go to another church. And there's actually like a village. Basically, it's kind of not hidden, but off to the side. Let's just say that. So let's grab that, and now... Where we could go is down here to this tree. There's a boss down here. There's a catacomb down here. But we're actually going to go here first, to this church and this village. Now to get here, what we can do is go from this grace, the rampart, and we just follow this way. This is where that bird was, that deaf bird. Now also, I'm not going to show this. I feel like it might be a waste of time. But from this grace, if you just come up here and go off road, there's another grace right there. So if you want to go get that grace, go for it. I'm not going to show it just because there's no reason to. It's not an important grace or anything like that. So yeah, we're going to fast travel over here. And now I'm going to get my horse. And let me pull up the map. I'm going to put my marker like right here. Just so I can actually know where I'm going. But this is technically just west of that grace. And we're just going off road. Pretty much. There are going to be some rats and stuff like that. You know you're in the right spot when you find the rats. And I do believe there's a shack too. Oh, no, it's a house. And there is an item right by the house. So let's get the item. Now we just need to kind of go to like this little road here. Pass all the rats. And you're going to see some more enemies. Now all these enemies over here, they have like the orange eyes. That means they're frenzy enemies and they can inflict madness on you which sucks so be careful but i believe there's really only one item in the village and it's going to be this right here which is a shield and there's the church so just look around until you see the church be careful there's going to be some rats over here so let's go ahead and try to take them out because i'm going to try to pull my map up here to show you where a grace is up here even though again the grace that's up here is not really important there's so many graces in the game, and so many of them are, like, not super necessary. That's a spell. There's a sacred tear. This enemy did drop an item. But let's go ahead and look at the map. Directly north, this is going to be a grace. So let's get to that. So I'm just going to go past everything and just get to the grace. And yeah, there's really nothing you can do from here. I did think that maybe you could drop down, or there would be something, but no, not really. 
It's just a grace for this top part over here, which is fine. But I'm going to rest here just so I can de-aggro all those enemies and use my map. And I guess I should level up. Okay, I will level up. I don't want to be holding on to this. I keep telling you guys to do it, and I'm not doing it. So now I have 30 Vigor. At this point, I'm going to put points into decks, and I'm going to get that up to 30. So now, where we're going to go is we are going to go back to that church, and then we will actually probably go down to where the tree is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this ahead, and I'm going to see you guys in a moment. Alrighty, so let's go to the catacombs first. It's going to be on the way. I'm going to put a beacon right there, but it's going to be pretty obvious. Let's go ahead and hop on our horse, and we are just heading towards the giant tree. That's basically it. Now, there is a tree boss in this area, and the tree bosses will drop more items for our mixed potion. This particular one actually drops some really good ones. One is a health regen, which is nice. It's like three minutes of health regen. That's really good. The other one is a bubble shield that will block out like one hit. That's really good for when you're going to take a very big hit. Both of these items from this tree boss is nice. Now before we go up that hill there, we can go down a little bit. And this is where the catacombs is. Again, it's kind of off to the side and hidden. But you'll find the door. And then of course, go ahead and hit the grace. And when we come down here, I believe there are skeletons in here. I'm going to be honest with you. I hate the skeletons. I normally like to run past them because they're very easy to run past. They're easy to kill too, but the difference is the skeletons aren't as bad as the gargoyles. The gargoyles will chase you and they will murder you. Skeletons will chase you, but they're just not as bad. So let's grab these items in here, and I'm just trying to avoid these guys at this point. I mean, I should be taking them out for the actual walkthrough. Okay, I guess I will. I'm just thinking about it. I just hate these skeletons because I just hate having to kill all of these stupid things. Alright, let's take that one out. And boom. It's just a double tap. I just don't like having to double tap, especially when there's a lot of skeletons. So the switch, by the way, is up there. You can already see it. And look, more. Yay. Basically, that is a ghost plant. Let's pick that one up. There's probably another one in here, too. There's always, like, 50 of them. Always. Stupidly annoying. Easy to deal with, but just stupid annoying. All right, let me look. Yep, there's a plant over here. Let's pick that up. Now, let's go ahead and go this way. And we got another skeleton to deal with. And take him out. There's probably more, but I'm just looking around. All right, we can go forward. And there's going to be some fire over here. Wait for it. And again, just go to the right. Oh man, I got smacked by it. It's almost always to the right. When you're talking about the fire, almost every single time, you just have to go to the right. So let's run forward. We can knock this down, but if you actually look, we can go up top. Now we're not going to do that yet. Let's grab the plant there. And if we come in here... There's going to be a bunch of skeletons, I'm pretty sure. Thank you. Grab that. Oh, God. And at this point, I do recommend, let's just get out of here. Let's jump up. And my feet are strong, so they will raise it up. And now, the fire will deal with all the skeletons for us. So that's kind of a cool little trick. And basically, from up here, I'm pretty sure we're going to get the switch. So let's look around. I do think that this is a short catacombs, so there's probably some skeletons. Yep, of course, there's skeletons. Let's take this guy out. And is there another one? There was. Deal with him real quick. Come here. And that's why I just don't like waiting for them to die so I can hit them again. Alright, let's come to the switch. And yeah, I think we're pretty much done. We just have to get to the boss now. And the boss is going to be up the stairs. I couldn't grab the flower because of the stupid message. I hate that message. I really do. I tried to, but I just couldn't because of the dumb message. All right. So we're going to come over here now. And this was the heavy door. And I'm going to buff. I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, this is like a stupid easy boss. 
don't even need to use an FP potion because I should be able to just one shot this thing maybe let's see come on come and get it and yeah I one shot at it so yeah that's completely ridiculous all right so now we did just get a legendary summon and I don't know how good it is I've never used that one but tell me if you think it's good they give you more than enough upgrade materials plus eventually you can buy them you can really try out all different summons and see which one you like the most some of them are defensive and some of them are like offensive so it's just up to you but we can now head over to the tree so I'm just hopping up and watch out for these enemies now this tree boss and all the tree bosses are pretty easy but they do have this one attack that is annoying he will slam his hammer or whatever you want to call that thing down and a bunch of like lasers will come after us now what you can do is you can block it but you will take damage because it's like holy damage and this shield will only block physical but we can also like walk over to the left and by doing that most of the projectiles should miss you can be aggressive he also has a butt slam. The butt slam is one of the best things to actually go ahead and get some free damage. It's very easy to avoid the butt slam. So let's sneak up behind him. We get a free hit. Free hit. Watch out. I'm going to roll away. You can block all the melees, but it does hit your shield hard. That's the butt slam I was talking about. After the butt slam, you can almost always get an attack. Okay, so this is good. Unfortunately, I got hit by that. I'm gonna block. Oh my god, I just need to roll. I was trying to block because normally I, I will block that attack and then try to move to the left like this. But if you could just start rolling to the left, that's kind of the best way of avoiding that. Rush, smack him, he's dead. Our damage is so great that none of the bosses are difficult because we can just out damage them. But that was not a very good example of like how to fight those guys. But these items are great. The Crimson Crystal Tier and that Bubble Tier is amazing. And I probably will end up using both of them, to be honest with you. So, where we're going to go is over here. Pretty much, it's going to be from this top part. Just head west, and there's going to be a drop-off. And there is an item we can get, but we can only get it from up here. So be careful not to fall off, but here is the drop off where all these little octopuses are. And now, if we look down there, we can see an item. So all you gotta do is just walk off. Okay, that was almost bad. And that's a shield. And over here, we can go ahead and come down here. And now we're on the bottom, and it's safe. There's a grace right there in front of me. It's south from that location, so let's go and get the grace. And... At this point, if you look over there, there is a giant walking mausoleum. Now these things are pretty awesome. The only problem is that there's no reason to really claim the reward right now. What they're going to drop is these things called Remembrance. And basically, that's what you're going to get from the bosses, the real like super bosses of the game. You'll get these things. The thing is, is that we don't have any right now. So... Every time you get one, you have a choice of two items. Sometimes it might be a spell and a weapon, or it might be two different weapons. If you take these things out and you get into the mausoleum, you can actually get a second copy of the same Remembrance. So that's really good. Now to take these out, all you gotta do is hit this white crap on the foot. That's basically it. Try not to get stomped on. This is the easiest one. Sometimes they have like special attacks and stuff. The only thing that's going to get you killed here is if you get stomped on. So just watch the foot. If the foot goes up, just get away from it. And yeah, you're just cleaning off all the stuff. And if you get enough of them, you don't have to get all of them, but you just have to get enough of them. It's going to fall down. So is it coming down? Nope. Watch out for when it raises up the foot. It might get like more angry and start to like raise up the foot more once it's getting closer to death. It's not even dying. Okay. I mean, I guess it is kind of dying. It's hard to say. It's just going to come down. So this is what I recommend. Take it down. That way, you don't have to do it later. And because we can't really use it right now, I mean, I can go inside and just take a look. See 
what happens. I've never even taken one of these down without beating some of the real bosses of the game or main bosses of the game. But if you interact with this thing, yeah, there's no option because we don't have an option yet. So what I recommend doing is just put a marker on the map. I'm going to put the flag and that's going to remind me that I have one of these things. It's down. It will not go back up. It will stay down. Later on, if you want to claim the reward, you can come back and claim the reward. Now, directly in front of us, there is a church, and this is another church. So, let's go there, because it's so obvious and easy to see. And this is going to be the last sacred tier of this area. But yes, we will now have three. And that means our potion will be at plus eight. Also, in all of these churches, I brought this up before, but you can actually talk to your girl, your maiden. So if you rest at the grace, you will have an option to talk to her. Well, maybe I don't, but you might. So if you do, if you want to talk to her, go for it. I guess I will actually upgrade my potion now because I'm pretty sure I can get another charge. Yep. And also we can use these and get the potion up to plus eight which is a total overkill. It really is right now because it's going to heal us real good, real, real good. So from this location, we actually have another boss battle we can go do. Let's do that real quick. It's another one of these little areas, these circle disc, and it's just like the Crucible Knight one. But with this one, we do actually have to use some of these stone keys. So let's see. Only one though. You can see the one sword already in. I only had to put one down and let's go inside once I'm in here I'll go ahead and buff but every one of these bosses you can get some free damage on them like when they spawn every single one of them so that's pretty cool let's go ahead and use our FP potion and let's rush it's gonna come out just gonna go ahead and smack it that's of course gonna miss so just be careful I'm gonna block wait for an opportunity that was a good one but I missed my attack Right, watch out, that's frostbite. It's a status. And this thing does have that. So I'm just trying to look for a good opportunity and I'm just not getting it. Oh my god. Alright, come on. I'm just gonna be aggressive. Just go for it. There we go. One more hit. Let me back up from that just to be safe. Alright, and what's it doing? I don't know. But one more attack, and it's gone. So I could have probably been aggressive there, but. I'm just trying to play it safe, trying to teach you how to be reactive and stuff. And guess what that is? That is the talisman that we have right now, but the lesser version of it. So there's no reason to use that one. It gives you plus three in the different attributes, where the one we have will give us plus five. Now there still is a lot of stuff to do here. I mean, not a ton, but there is definitely some more stuff to do. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save that for the next episode. Because in the next episode, we'll finish this place up, and then we will go and do the castle here. And then hopefully, we will also do Stormville Castle as well. That's going to be the plan. Alrighty, guys. Well, I really do hope that you have enjoyed this episode, and it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe for future episodes of this series. And if you do, make sure to click the bell. That way, you can stay notified. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do hope that everyone... As a very nice day and peace out.